Welcome to a new episode of The Doc Is In. Um, I'm Paul Ramya, a radiation oncologist at the Oncology Institution at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Today's topic is going to be brain metastases. And it's my pleasure to have this conversation with my friend and guest, Dr. Muhammad Sami Al Hamadi, um, who's a consultant neurosurgeon also at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Sami, it's great to have this conversation with you. Yeah, it's great to see you. Great seeing you. All right, perfect. So let's set the stage and maybe give our audience a little bit of a background. Um, so what is a brain metastasis and how does that usually present in patients? Uh, a great question. So first of all, let, we can divide brain tumors into uh, primary brain tumors and secondary brain tumors. So primary brain tumors, that means these are tumors that actually arise from the brain tissue themselves. Secondary brain tumors, or what we call metastases, these are, these are tumors that they, are, they develop somewhere in the body outside of the brain, outside the CNS, the central nerve system, and then they spread to the brain. Um, and those are, so, and those are what we call metastases. So, the with regards to the symptoms, with uh, I like to divide them into kind of uh, these general symptoms of, of brain tumors in general. So, patients that have uh, anything that uh, increases the intracranial pressure. So, they patients can have symptoms of headache, uh, nausea, vomiting. They can have some visual disturbances. These tumors sometimes can irritate the brain and cause seizures. Um, and then you have more specific uh, symptoms based on where these tumors are located. So, for example, if they're located uh, in, er in an area responsible for speech, then they can have some speech difficulties, an area where um, uh, in the motor cortex they can have some weakness, uh, in the sensory cortex they can have some numbness or tingling on one side of their body. Um, uh, if they're in the, in, the, uh, in the cerebellum, for example, which is responsible for coordination, they can have some imbalance and problems with coordination, things like that. So, in general, those, that, those are the symptoms. Perfect. And what would you say, and this is a question I get from my patients all the time, what's the best way to see if we have brain metastases and how many they are? What would be the best modality of choice? That's great. Another great question. So the, uh, there's several ways of imaging the brain. You know, the quick way of doing it is a, a CT scan. Um, it's a quick 10 minutes study, but it gives you just kind of a gross picture of the brain. But if you really want a detailed study of the brain, then you need an MRI of the brain. Um, and it needs to be done with contrast um, uh, because these these two after administration of the contrast these tumors then will just light will light up and makes it easy to differentiate from the rest of the brain. All right, perfect. And so now, now that we've given the audience a little bit of a background of what a brain metastasis is, maybe this is a good time to actually talk about treatment options. So I always tell patients that once you have a brain metastasis, getting treatment as soon as possible, and of course effective treatment is important. Um, so maybe this would be a good time to talk yeah. about different treatments. Well, you know something, before I, I talk about the surgical treatment, maybe you can give us a little idea about the non-surgical okay. options first. Sure, absolutely. Um, so when, in general, whenever somebody has a brain metastasis, treatments can be surgical, like you mentioned. There's also new drugs. So classically, we used to think that uh, chemotherapies don't cross the blood-brain barrier. Um, but some of these newer drugs are pretty effective. And it really depends. So not all patients are candidates for this new drugs, but the vast majority of patients end up getting radiation therapy. So when it comes to radiation, there's two major ways to treat the brain. We can either treat all of the brain, and this has been the classic old way of doing things, where we don't just treat the brain lesions, but we treat all the brain. And that's effective, but it has side effects. Uh, the most common side effect, of course, is headache. You can have some sleepiness. But the side effect that patients worry about the most is memory, uh, memory issues, so cognitive side effects. So we have a few tricks up our sleeve so that when we need to treat all the brain, we can use these tricks. So we can use some advanced technology called IMRT or VMAT, where we protect the hippocampi. Um, essentially, we protect the areas of the brain responsible for memory. There's also medicines we can give that can help improve memory outcomes. The second way of treating brain metastases, and the way with less side effects, especially when it comes to memory, is radiosurgery, or SRS, where we target each lesion individually. Now, there are caveats for this, and this is the treatment that, in this era, and with our advanced technologies, that's the treatment we prefer, and that's the treatment we give most often. But there are some caveats. The lesions have to be small enough, um, and the number of lesions has to be also limited. 
um, just to make the treatment feasible. Can I ask you a question? So sure. We have a, a lot of times our patients will come and ask us uh, about uh, radio surgery, but they, they know they know them by the name of, for example, gamma knife or cyber knife. Can you can you explain the different types of radio surgery and the differences uh, between sure. them? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a great question. <laughs> I'm glad you asked it because it's something that uh, recurs frequently in our clinic. Um, so there's different platforms to use this technology. So the technology and the the type of treatment is called stereotactic radio surgery. And there are different platforms and different machines. So one of them is the cyber knife, one of them is the gamma knife, and one of them is LINAC-based radio surgery. And they all have small differences in between them. So the gamma knife is essentially a helmet um, that delivers the radiation from different sources. The cyber knife is uh, a radiation machine put on a robotic arm. And the LINAC-based radiation is basically the standard radiation machine with a few extra tools that allows you to treat from many different angles and also allowing you to move the patient. It's all technical, but at the end of the day, when it comes to brain metastases, all options um, are good. So all three platforms are very similar. Um, it's just a technical difference. Not all centers have all different machines. And in fact, that would be redundant. Um, so what we typically use here is LINAC-based uh, radio surgery. Um, and our patients are pretty happy with that. It's quick, it's effective, and there's really no major differences. Fantastic. So, uh, how about what are, you know? What are you, what are some of the limits? Is there a limited a limited number of lesions that you can uh, target? How about yeah. and similarly is about how about the size? Yeah. So, when it comes to what can we treat and what we can't treat, it's really more of a volume issue. In the past, um, when when this technology first started out. You could only treat one, two, or three lesions. You were really limited. But then these indications over time have expanded, so you could treat five lesions and now 10 lesions. The, the condition is that the volume of the brain getting the radiation has to be limited. So if you have many small lesions, for the most part, that's OK. And you can treat them with the radio surgery. Um, if you have many large lesions, then that might not be the best scenario. And you really have to individualize it as to what is possible in terms of radiation planning or not. There's also other factors to consider. So what type of cancer this is. Some types of cancers, uh, radio surgery is not the best way to go um, and, and vice versa. So it really also depends on some uh, biological factors and tumor histology. Great. Perfect. So I think that covers the radiation part. Um, it's also quite frequent because you mentioned size. Um, so patients will come to us uh, quite symptomatic. Um, and we often talk about this a lot behind the scenes, even before we see patients, just what would be the best way to approach treatment? Should we do surgery first? Should we do radiation instead? Um, so maybe you can talk a little bit about surgery and indications for surgery. Sure. Uh, well, first of all, that's why, you know, uh, this is why we work in these multidisciplinary teams to be able to have these discussions, right? Um, when it comes to surgery, the way I think about it for, in regards to metastases, there's several indications. So number one uh, is just for tissue diagnosis. So sometimes you see the lesion in the brain and that's the first presentation you don't, and you, and you, you scan the whole body looking for another tumor and you don't find it. So the, uh, we would operate for the reason just so we, just for tissue diagnosis, so we know what type of tumor it is. When you have several lesions, you know, classically sp speaking, as long as there are less than three lesions in the brain and they are relatively accessible with low morbidity, you can make the argument of uh, surgically removing those lesions for the, uh, with the goal of achieving uh, CNS cure, all right? And then sometimes you you have patients with more than three lesions or multiple lesions, but one of them just doesn't respond uh, to, is not responding to the treatment, or one is just very large and, and is causing patient uh, some symptoms. And in, in those cases, then we can just target this, the, you know, the largest lesion and remove that uh, to relieve the patient's uh, symptoms. So basically, those are the those are the surgical indications. Yeah, perfect. And and that's exactly the conversation we had. So uh, we have all the time. So a lot of times we get a patient walk in. And they don't have that uh, symptoms and or they have very minimal symptoms that have been managed medically. And those are excellent patients for radiation therapy. But 
quite often when you have these very large tumors with lots of edema and lots of symptoms, surgery is a faster way to, to get these patients to feel better. Um, and then comes the question, well, they've had their surgery. Um, how long is the recovery time? What are complications in general of surgery? And then what's the next step? Right. So uh, this is what patients will kind of will expect. So we'll need they'll need a specific type of MRI before the for the procedure. Um, uh, it's a uh, very thin cut uh, MRI, um, uh, and we use this for na neuro navigation. So it's kind of like our GPS of surgery, so that we can do uh, we can perform a minimally invasive uh, neurosurgical procedure, meaning that we that the opening in um, uh, the the opening and the incision that we make is the smallest opening possible to be able to remove these to remove these tumors. Um, uh, the in a you know, uh, another way of treating these tumors is also through uh, lit therapy or laser in interstitial uh, thermal therapy. We can use a laser to uh, to kind of burn the burn these tumors. Um, with surgery, the uh, patients the, the these procedures uh, are typically done under general anesthesia. The uh, for the most part, the the, the surgery d d lasts roughly about anywhere between two to three hours. Um, uh, the patients. Uh, most of the time, we observe them overnight um, in an ICU, and the next day they'll uh, transfer to a regular floor, and usually they're able to get go home with you know within about two to three days. Um, uh, the, the procedures aren't aren't very t painful, right? Um, uh, and then we would see the patients in clinic in around uh, two weeks, and at that point we remove their staples. Perfect. Yeah. And how important is that period after surgery in terms of organizing things? So. Patients will often come to me because of the radiation part that comes after the surgery, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But they also want to know if there's anything they need to do in terms of their diet, their health in general, and rehab. Um, so if they get any physical therapy just after surgery. Right. So all our patients get uh, evaluated um, after surgery in the hospital by our physical therapy team. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, as long as they're doing well with no, no deficits, as most of our patients do, then yeah. they typically will be able to go home, you know. But occasionally, you can have some patients that will have either some symptoms either before surgery, some and uh, and uh, for example, some weakness, and maybe we can work on that. And they would benefit from either inpatient or outpatient uh, physical therapy. With regards to uh, wound care, it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I personally have my patients uh, take a, you know able to take a shower three days after surgery, you know. And uh, they can get back. Usually, most patients will be able to get back to their regular, resume their regular activities within two weeks. And then, uh, and at that point, if they need any additional treatment, uh, such as radiation or chemotherapy, then we would do that. The question I have for you, though, is: Do we do the patients need? You know, we've removed the tumor. Do they do they still need radiation after the after surgery? Sure. So, great question. And again, it depends on uh, uh, many factors, but in general, for patients who've just had a surgery, we do give radiation therapy um, using the same technique I mentioned before, that stereotactic radiosurgery, to the surgical bed, so where that tumor was. And the reason we do this is to decrease the chance of this tumor coming back in the surgical bed. Now, of course, if there are other lesions, then we need to treat those other lesions, and then that choice comes again. What's the best treatment possible? And I had alluded to previously just these chemotherapies or these newer therapies, targeted therapies. So sometimes if a patient is a candidate for those therapies, we're okay waiting on the radiation um, as long as they have another effective treatment option. Um, so at the end of the day, of course, after surgery, we do see them. We do have this discussion. We ourselves also get a, another MRI specifically designed for treatment planning. And after that, um, we tell them all about the radiation details and how many sessions. It's typically with this advanced technique, usually one to five sessions, and it goes pretty smoothly. And once we're done with the treatment, patients will either go back to their medical oncologist for systemic therapies, um, but we will always monitor them with serial MRIs just to make sure that if anything else does pop up in the brain, we're able to catch it early, because the earlier we catch it, the easier and more effective treatment can be. Um, and that's usually the, the care path for, for these patients with brain metastases. That's fantastic. Perfect. I, I think we've covered uh, the essentials. So just to recap, radiation is very effective. Um, stereotactic radiation, where we target individual lesions, um, is the way we do things most of the time. And it's also very effective with little side effects. 
Um, surgery is also a very important tool in the arsenal, especially for big tumors and symptomatic tumors. And after surgery, we see them again for some radiation. And all this is kind of done in discussion between ourselves, so radiation oncologists, neurosurgeons, and medical oncologists. Um, so I think that's the recap. Is there anything you want to add or anything you want to tell our audience? No, I think you, uh, you summarized it very well. Um, uh, I appreciate the, uh, our audience for uh, watching our podcast, and uh, we wish you always the best of health, and uh, thank you for attending. Perfect. So thank you again for this lovely conversation. And so for our audience uh, at home, this has been uh, a great conversation. If you do have any brain metastases or any questions, reach out to your expert medical professionals.